Procedure for analysis. Problems that involve the addition of two forces can be solved as follows. First, the parallelogram law. Make a sketch showing the vector addition using the parallelogram law. Two component forces add according to the parallelogram law, yielding a resultant force that forms the diagonal of the parallelogram. If a force is to be resolved into components using the axes directed from the tail of the force, then start at the head of the force and construct lines parallel to the axes, thereby forming the parallelogram law. The sides of the parallelogram represent the components. Label all the known and unknown force magnitudes and the angles on the sketch and identify the two unknowns. Now let's discuss trigonometry. First, redraw a half portion of the parallelogram to illustrate the triangular head-to-tail addition of the components. The magnitude of the resultant force can be determined from the law of cosines, and its direction is determined from the law of sines. An easy way to memorize this triangle is to know that the sides in capital letters are corresponded with small letters. For example, capital C is corresponded by angle C and side A is corresponded by angle A. So sine law states that A over sine A is equal to B over sine B, which is equal to C over sine C. And the cosine law states that C is equal to square root of A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. Finally, the magnitude of the two force components are determined from the law of sines. Now let's discuss important points of this chapter. First, a scalar is a positive or negative number. A vector is a quantity that has magnitude, direction, and sense. Multiplication or division of a vector by a scalar will change the magnitude of the vector. The sense of the vector will change if the scalar is negative. As a special case, if the vectors are collinear, the resultant is formed by an algebraic or scalar addition. 